Hello everybody, welcome back to more Banjo-Tooie. So, we have now officially cleared Cloud Cuckoo Land, and for this episode, what we're gonna do is, with our new arsenal of all the moves in the game, we're gonna go back to all of the different worlds that we haven't gotten everything from, and clear them up and collect everything for the rest of the game in preparation for the final confrontation. Now, you might be asking, well, why are you here in Cloud Cuckoo Land? I thought you got everything there. Yeah, I did. I just really like this music. That's why. <laughs> That's literally the only reason why. Anyhow, if we go back to our totals and look at our past work, we can see we're missing one Jinjo here in the Isle of Hags. We're actually missing a Jinjo back in Spiral Mountain, believe it or not. Uh, we have everything in the Mayahem Temple. We're missing two Jiggies in Glitter Gulch Mine. We're missing one Jiggy in Witchy World. We're missing three Jiggies and a Cheeto Page back in Jolly Roger's Lagoon. We're missing a single Jiggy in Land. We're missing two Jiggies in Grunty Industries. And we're missing a Jiggy in Hailfire Peaks. So we're gonna have to go back to all of those worlds in order to collect everything. Now, first step is we're gonna go back to Glitter Gulch Mine because the two remaining Jiggies we have there should be very, very easy to grab now that we have our arsenal of moves. We could have gotten everything here back when we went to Pterodactyland, but eh, I wanted to do all the backtracking in one video, with the exception of saving Dilberta from the prison compound in Maya Temple. That's the one thing I did earlier. I thought I also went to the Power Hut basement, but no, I did not. Let's head out back into Glitter Gulch Mine. It's been a while. So right off the bat, one thing that we got early was this Cheeto page that was up on the main sign here. So you have those little super shoes here. You also have the springy step shoes. What the game wanted you to do is to wait till you get the springy step shoes and then bounce to the top of this sign in order to grab the Cheeto page. But you can also literally just climb the rope and then hover down. Very easy. Anyhow, there are two places that we need to go to today. One is the Power Hut basement, and the other is behind a little waterfall. So let's see which one we can reach first. I know the Power Hut basement is over this way. I thought for sure I already did the Power Hut basement, but that is not true. Alright, looks like we're going to Power Hut first. So if we go over to Mumbo's Skull, there's the entrance to the mine here. It's a mine entrance number two. The Gloomy Caverns. Yeah, we can go back this way. Now what we need to do is somewhere around here, there's a set of split-up pads that we were not able to use on our first visit. I believe it, yep, it's up here. So what we're going to do is, as Banjo, we're going to head on over into this shack here, which is the Power Hut. Banjo can climb up this ladder, and then press the switch at the top, which has a swap cloud on it. Now remember, way back when we first pressed this, this turns on all the lights in the Power Hut basement. However, as soon as we step off the switch, then the lights turn back off. So now we're going to swap over to Kazooie and have Kazooie go into the Power Hut basement and grab the Jiggy for us. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but you can easily grab this Jiggy without needing the split-up pads. All you have to do is turn your TV brightness up, like, to the maximum level, and you'll actually be able to see the way through the Power Hut basement without needing the lights. But this does make it a bit easier. And also, because we have the glide ability, we can literally just cut through the shortcut as well. Get over here and grab ourselves a Jiggy. I'm not sure why this basement has bottomless pits everywhere, but okay. Anyhow, that's the Power Hut basement, so that's one of the Jiggies we needed in Glitter Gulch Mine. The other one is extremely simple to see, but reaching it requires you to actually... Well, <laughs> requires you to have a special move. So we can literally leg sprint up here to reunite the two. And remember, as soon as we turn off, step off that switch, all the lights go out. I guess the, the miners here in Glitter Gulch Mine are really concerned about conserving power. Yeah, I thought for sure I did that, because I know I grabbed the Jinjo on top of the water canister in here, which you need to go through Jolly Roger's Lagoon in order to reach, so I thought I already... I thought I did the Power Hut back when I did that. I guess not, though. So that way we'll lead to the Generator Cavern, which we don't really care about. This way should lead back into Glitter Gulch Mine. 
There we go. All right, next step is we need to find the waterfall. So the source of the water flowing through the river here. So we are at, I believe, the exact opposite end of the mine. Yep, because that's the gate over there that will let us lead us to the waterfall cavern. But that's not what we want. There's just a generic waterfall in this world that we want to grab. Grab as if the waterfall itself is the collectible. No, Artie. No, but there is a secret collectible in the waterfall. That's something to always watch out for. Anytime in a video game there's a waterfall, well, there better be a secret behind it. If not, it's a wasted opportunity. It's always disappointing when you go to, to a waterfall in a game and there's nothing there. Okay, no, that's... So the river, we need to follow the direction where the river is flowing from. So remember, the, the river flows downstream towards the waterfall cavern, but all of this water is coming from a waterfall. Which should be over here. Yep, there it is. As you can see, there's a Jiggy up there. Now, there are two ways to actually grab this Jiggy. First way, and the way that they intended, is we can destroy this crate and use the Springy Step Shoes. Okay, we actually have to hop all the way around. I bet, but for some reason, we couldn't grab onto that. Okay. Springy Step Shoes phase back into existence. That's easy enough. We can hop across the tracks. Avoid the yeehaw guy. Go all the way back here, and then do a super jump, and we can grab the jiggy like that. Another way, which you can get slightly, slightly earlier, as well as arguably being a little easier, is we can use a clockwork egg. Remember, clockwork eggs can grab stuff for us, so we can launch one up here and then grab it with the clockwork. Clockwork eggs allow you to sequence break a lot of stuff. <laughs> Anyhow, that's everything for Glitter Gulch Mine. You can actually grab all of this technically before you even step foot into Pterodactyl Land, but the game wants you to have the Springy Step Shoes, which you can get right inside of Pterodactyl Land. So next up, we're going to go to Witchy World, and remember how the, all the worlds are pretty much interconnected? Well, remember that the fuel storage actually leads to the Saucer of Peril game in Witchy World, so <laughs> let's just take this convenient little shortcut that we haven't taken before. From the Fuel Depot. And off to Witchy World we go. Oh, Witchy World, it's nice to be back. <laughs> it's so nice to be back. Anyhow, there's only one Jiggy we have left to get here, and that is getting Mrs. Boggy's kids back. If you remember, uh, Groggy was in the Inferno and ate way too much, so we, uh, he wanted us to carry him back. We couldn't do that, but now that we have the Taxi Pack, which we got from Pterodactyl Land, we can. I suppose it would have been faster to warp through there. Oh, uh, no. Ouch. Those don't look like they're spiky. Maybe they're glowing red hot. I mean, the Inferno guys did put actual lava in here. Yep, so there's Groggy. So we're off to find the split pads in here. They're around here somewhere. Oh, they're way back here. So we can just split up Banjo and Kazooie. Oh. Hey, you. Even though he's massive, we can actually fit him in our backpack for some reason. Then we can just warp back to the entry and exit, and then bring him out for his mom. This guy is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Boggy. Here's her kid. What did I tell you about not running off? I'm sorry, Mom. Sorry isn't good enough, you young man. You've been eating again, haven't you? Well, you'd still better want your dinner. It was that strange bear, Mom. He made me eat this burger. Enough of your lies. <laughs> yeah, don't lie to your mom. 
Well, I think we've all had enough excitement today. Time to go back home for to Hailfire Peaks. Boggy will be wondering where we've gone to. He'd better have the dinner in the oven. Bye then. Thanks again, Banjo. Take this jiggy I found in the ticket office earlier. I hope her other kids are waiting in the car. <laughs> Still don't know how they broke into Witchy World before it was actually reopened, but all right. <laughs> there we go. We have 82 Jiggies now. Hey, Banjo, you're not leaving this world without me. Oh, yeah, I knew I forgot somebody. Actually, we can't leave just yet. One of the, uh, one of the Jiggies in Pterodactyland actually requires us to do stuff in Witchy World first. So remember that the Oogle Boogles exist in Pterodactyland, and they are cold and shivering, and also very hungry. We, we heated them up, but they're still hungry. And they're like, junk food would be nice. So what we need to do is actually get them burgers and fries from Witchy World. Unfortunately, Grunty has a very strict, no food is allowed outside of Witchy World policy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. She's not letting us take any food outside of this world. So we're going to have to find a way around that. And there's actually a convenient little thing we can do. <laughs> so first off, we need to actually go and get burgers and fries because we don't have any because Grunty keeps taking them from us. The gal's burgers are right around the corner. Give me some burgers, Al! Okay, kid. Burgers coming right up. Uh, you want fries with that? Ooh, yes, please! Well, too bad. Burgers is all I got. Go see Salty Joe. I will. What? I've got no more burgers left. Better root around for some more. I think there's one just under your left foot. Where? I can't see it. He's not gonna, like, make more burgers. He's just gonna try to find them just lying out. Because that's how burgers work. You don't actually have to work for them. They just exist and you have to find them. It's like a treasure hunt. Anyhow, hey, Salty Joe. Give me some fries, Joe. Yeah, fries coming right up. Uh, have a nice day, I guess. I knew he would say that. Yeah, me too. Because he's already said it before when we've ordered fries before. Hmm, I better start frying up some more because I'm all out. Yes, you better prepare for the impending rush. Why, you cheeky. Okay, so we have the burgers and the fries. However, Grunty has barricaded every exit and with signs that say no food allowed outside of Witchy World. Every exit except one. There is a very difficult to reach exit that we can that leads to Pterodactyland that we can actually take. However, it requires an advanced move. So we have to first Talon Trot up this tent. Easier said than done, because the camera is kind of bad. We actually don't need to Talon Trot up these ropes. However, we do need to Talon Trot up the actual circus tent. So up here, there's a Jinjo. There are also these Claw Clamber Boots. You'll remember the Claw Clamber Boots existed here before we actually learned the move, and you were probably wondering what these are used for. Well, I'll show you. What we need to do is take the Claw Clamber Boots all the way back here to Bunker 51, or Area 51, whatever you want to call it. This is the one place in the level that actually has footprints we can walk up with the Claw Clamber Boots. We're very far away from where you actually find the clock clamber boots, but it's here. So let's walk up the wall. And there's a secret exit up here that Grunty doesn't know about, which does not have the no food allowed outside. So we can go on through with all of our burgers and fries. And this takes us, conveniently, to the Oogle Boogles Cave. You'll remember that we opened this up back in Pterodactyland, and I said we're not going there yet because we didn't have clock clamber boots. Anyhow. We're gonna feed them. Be warm, but still need food. Junk food, good. Me need food you got. You give. Actually, no, I'm gonna hold on to it. You not nice. Me so hungry. Honestly, the Oogobogos are pretty nice. So we should give them food. Yes, here you go. Here's some fries. Mmm, that tasty. Me all happy now. That's nice, Mr. Oogle. 
Never fear, I come bringing burgers. Be warm, but still need food. Junk food. But he's literally eating dirt. He's so hungry. We've got to get him food. There's some fries. Mmm, that tasty. Me all happy now. Why am I still hearing the sound of... Why am I still hearing the sound of Terry's egg when it's no longer here? I'm very confused. Alright, so that Oogle Boogle is happy as well. There's one other guy somewhere around here. Why is this cave so dark even though I've already lit up the torches? Oh, that's right. I think he's up here. No, it's, he's not up there. That just leads back to witchy world. That's right, I think we have to do get on the rock ledge here. Boing! Come on, why is this shock jump disc so precise? There we go. Yeah, here he is. Me warm, but still need food. Junk food, good. Me need food you got, you give. Yep, here you go, buddy. Mmm, that tasty. Me all happy now. Baron, bird, friend, save Ugo Boogle tribe from extinction. Must have reward now. Honestly, out of all the cavemen, the Unkabungas, the Oogle Boogles, and the Rock Nuts, Oogle Boogles were the nicest. Why are there teeth marks on it? Me thought chocolate was inside. <laughs> He's so happy he starts playing his horn. Aw, oh, that's great. Why is this game so, like, like, literally dark? There's certain parts that it's like, almost impossible to see. Anyhow, that gives us another Jiggy. Hey, Pterodactyland! So now we have everything in Pterodactyland. However, there are still two things I want to do here. Ouch. The first thing I want to do is I want to take the flight pad over to Dippy's water. If you'll remember, we only explored Dippy's area back when there was no water. Now that we actually gave him the water from Cloud Cuckoo Land, he's all happy now. So we'll just take this flight pad and pay him a visit. Hey, Dippy. I've got all the water I need now. Thanks. But now this pond is filled with water. You'll remember that there was a secret cave down here. Yeah, right here. We went down here and there was a Chio page flying high up, and we were able to snag it with a clockwork egg, but this is how you're supposed to get it. Once the pond is filled up, we we're able to swim and do it no problem. But again, you can sequence break like I did to get a Cheeto page early. <laughs> I'm so glad Dippy is happy. Everybody's getting happy. It's wonderful. Anyhow, there is still one other thing that we need to do here, and it doesn't have, involve a Jiggy here, but it actually involves a Jiggy in Hailfire Peaks. The one Jiggy we weren't able to get in Hailfire Peaks, as a matter of fact. What we need to do is we need to go and take this warp pad over to the Stomping Plains. Now, we were able to cross the, cross the stomping points of Banjo and Kazooie together by using Wonderwing, and Kazooie is fast enough to run through as well, provided we use the paw prints. There is, however, a switch at the end here for Solo Banjo. Now, in the past, we were totally unable to get Solo Banjo across here, but all of that has changed now, with the invention of one specific move. Alright, so what we're going to do is wait for the Stompadon to raise its foot, jump, and then run. And we're going to get stepped on. 
So there are two different ways you can get this. With the Super Banjo Cheat activated, you can actually just run through no problem. But what you're supposed to do is run through here and then use... Not the taxi pack. Use the snooze pack in order to recover your HP. As long as you have more than one HP, the Stompadon is not going to kill you with its steps. But if you're at one HP, it will. So we can just keep using snooze pack here over and over again in order to keep refilling our HP so that way we don't get killed by the Stompadon. You do not need to refill your HP all the way. You literally just need to refill one. One of the few things that the snooze pack is actually technically needed. I mean, it's technically not needed, but the game intends for you to use snooze pack to get through. Alrighty. We do that. We can press this solo banjo switch. Because that leads to a different world, we need to reunite Banjo and Kazooie together in order to actually go through there. So now Kazooie has to go through this solo again. Pretty easy, though. Kazooie's nice and fast. The Stompadon is crazy, by the way. Like, I don't know what beef it has with us. I think it literally just wants to squish us for fun. Crazy. Anyhow, we've reunited them together, and if we go through here, you'll notice it's starting to get a bit cold. That's because we are heading to the wonderful icy side of Hailfire Peaks. Remember this jiggy behind the icy wall that I said you can't get? Well, you have to go through Pterodactyl. It's kind of weird. Th that jiggy should, by all intents and purposes, just be a Pterodactyl and jiggy, but because it's technically physically present here in Hailfire Peaks, it counts as a Hailfire Peaks jiggy. But it's also weird because the oil rig jiggy in Hailfire Peaks, that counts as a grunt. That does not count as a Grunty Industries jiggy, even though we technically grabbed it in Grunty Industries. Oh well. 